are addressing uh, in this webinar the new advanced home upgrade portal in PG&E service territory and PG&E slash SoCal gas service territory. Uh, oh, and uh, the announcement I made um, prior, which probably wasn't heard as well, uh, is we'll, we'll save questions for the, well, you can submit questions as you go along in the dialog box on the right, you know, in the right-hand panel on your screen. Um, and we will answer them, uh, time permitting, at the end of the webinar. Um, so, so write them as you go along, and um, at the end we'll, we'll get through them uh, as many as we can. The agenda for today, an overview, uh, sort of a high level why, uh, when, what, et cetera. Key dates, managing your job submissions with this change. Um, using the new Advanced Home Upgrade Portal, and then questions and comments at the end, as always. So what's going on? We are moving out of Green Energy Compass. It's being replaced by Build a Green's online portal. And you may ask why. Uh, well, there are a number of reasons. Um, among them are the need to accommodate acceptance of HP XML output files. Uh, there are a number of software vendors vying for the opportunity to um, win your business for inputting um, your job data into their software tools and then outputting HP XML files, which we can then accept by uh, similar, similarly to uh, how you do with Energy Pro XML files now. Uh, we can accept them in the online portal. Now, that's, that's part of why this change has occurred. We, we started building the new Advanced Home Upgrade Portal specifically to accommodate that and uh, are now, uh, as that process of vetting HPXML output files and, and the various software vendors, um, uh, software tools, has taken a little bit longer. Uh, we are actually moving, you know, we, we've moved past the point we, we actually have the, the Advanced Home Upgrade Portal ready to accept existing Energy Pro XML files. And um, one of the reasons we, we're transitioning now is because um, we, there have been some challenges with third-party database solutions. So um, Green Energy Compass has, has, we've experienced with it the sort of the limitations of having an off-site third-party database solution um, with the advent of the new uh, advanced home upgrade incentive calculation. So uh, it's, it's made it imperative that we get uh, things moved over soon. Um, and I, we fully expect a, a more efficient, uh, more user-friendly user experience. And again, we're always looking to improve program participants' user experience, and with an in-house um, database software solution, we're able to do that better. Um, and then, of course, the new Advanced Home Upgrade incentive calculation um, is the only calculation we're going to use going forward. So. We're starting off fresh with that as the, the underpinning of what's accepted in um, the Advanced Home Upgrade Portal. And uh, it just be clear that going forward, um, all applications will go through that Advanced Home Upgrade uh, new incentive calculation, which you may be familiar with from previous webinars uh, or presentations. Looks like this. On the left side, uh, you see in columns A and B the, the basic um, Advanced Home Upgrade tier structure for incentives, which is based on output from an Energy Pro XML file. Now, of course, now uh, with the new incentive calculation, that's a modified um, savings percentage based on the savings coming out of that XML file, which are then uh, have ratios applied to them, whether they're kilowatt hours or therms, which you can see in the table below. And uh, we've, we've explained this in detail at, at other time, so I won't get too far into it. Then we add, of course, the kickers for kilowatt hours and therms, and we come up with a final incentive amount, which has a higher threshold. This uh, more complex calculation has, uh, you know, given us a, a good insight into to just what the limitations are with our existing um, third-party software solution. So this is one of the reasons for moving over as soon as possible into the Advanced Home Upgrade Portal, a new one. Here's what you've been, uh, in some cases, using to estimate. So this is something that you could, can continue to use if you so wish, but uh, you won't need to anymore after you start using the new Advanced Home Upgrade Portal. 
as this calculation will be done for you in exactly the same way. So there shouldn't be any more rounding errors uh, or, um, you know, sort of difficult to explain details like that with your um, customers going forward. So what's different between going from Green Energy Compass to Build a Green's online portal? Uh, we have spent a lot of time simplifying the user interface uh, for a more efficient process. It's very similar to the home upgrade program pathway. So if you're familiar with participating in home upgrade, uh, you'll recognize uh, many of the design uh, elements and features that currently exist in the home upgrade uh, program portal. It's more dynamic uh, and there are more features. So we're able to search in columns. Um, there's a, we, we, we have full control over um, you know, a, a dashboard that can display your, uh, your rebate application uh, details and compile some of the uh, data on uh, numbers. Uh, and you know, in the future, we're looking to um, continue to advance some uh, features, feature improvements uh, for you know, use for all program participants for this portal. Bringing the data in-house improves rebate processing time because we uh, don't have to interact with uh, an off-site third-party um, software vendor in order to um, get or uh, sort of reconcile data. And then the flexible uh, database structure allows for regular and ongoing improvement. So we expect to fully to, to roll out on a, on a regular basis, um, you know, uh, new features, slightly tweaked and improved features, and so on. And then, of course, it's a, it's a one-stop shop. It's the, it, it's the ability exists when all um, program pathways that Build a Green implements for pg e exist in the same um, user interface uh, for program particip participants who are enrolled in, in multiple to switch between the programs without having to log in to a new portal. So, for instance, a contractor is home upgrade and advanced home upgrade eligible, or approved rather, and they're also approved for AC quality care, they can literally just toggle between the different programs to upload their applications um, without having to, to go to a new uh, user, I'm mean, sorry, uh, URL, uh, you know, uh, portal address, I mean, um, web address, or to, uh, without having to enter new login and password information. So once you're in, you're in. It currently looks like this. So uh, when you go from buildagreenutility.org and use the Advanced Home Upgrade button, it takes you to Green Energy Compass. As of December, that's what the login looks like, of course. Many of you are familiar with this. As of December 1st, 2014, the, new, uh, the button will, will redirect to a new URL. And if you want to record it uh, for your own use, um, upcoming, uh, this will be the URL it goes to. So this is the, the web address. Uh, currently, it takes you to the same user login panel that you use for AC quality care or for home upgrade. Now, as we just discussed, it, it's going to include advanced home upgrade as of December 1st, 2014. So it's as simple as that. One-stop shop for, for all three of those programs. Is what the panel looks like if you haven't already been using it. And then, uh, so with, without further ado, let's get into some key dates because this is kind of where the rubber meets the road in terms of participation. We'll get into actually using the um, Advanced Home Upgrade portal uh, and user interface in a little bit. So when Green, you know, Green Energy Compass is being replaced by Build Green's online portal, the key dates are as follows. So as of Friday. Uh, November 21st, that would be the last day to submit a new pre-installation application for Advanced Home Upgrade in Green Energy Compass. The following week is a holiday week. It's when, you know, Thanksgiving week, and um, we need some time to transition, so we have to set a date where we can transition cleanly and have some time to, to adjust. So in anticipation of December 1st, the last day, again, to submit new pre-installation applications for Advanced Home Upgrade and Green Energy Compass will be Friday, November 21st. Also the last day to submit a current rebate applications in Green Energy Compass list. So 
what we want to see from um, all participating contractors is that they, between now and uh, November 21st, take a look at the jobs you currently have in Green Energy Compass and simply go down the list and qualify whether that is a current active job or whether it's one that's, you know, essentially abandoned inactive for a long period of time with little hope of resurrecting. I mean, every once in a while you get a homeowner that will call you a year later. We all know it happens. But at some point we need to cut the cord. And if you think there's a reasonable possibility of having that customer call you back, you know, in a, in a month or two or sometime in the near future, just may, put it on a, a, another list that, that is a, your, your migration list. So, so you have your, your top priority, current and active. Um, we address those first. Uh, Long-term migration, if you think it's something that you, that's still alive. Um, there's others you know as general contractors or especially as HVAC contractors that are not, they're no longer live leads. You may have spent some time uh, doing some um, assessment, but the, the people you, you identified right off the bat are tire kickers and they're not really that interested or, you know, you got some feedback from them that there's little to no hope that that job is resurrected. So those applications we want to know too because either you let us know what, what status they should be in or they're going to just get closed as inactive abandoned jobs uh, beginning uh, in December. So um, make sure that, uh, again, by uh, November 21st, you get your all your new pre-installation applications into Green Energy Compass if you have to. Uh, or and or your list of current um, rebate applications in Green Energy Compass that need to be uh, transferred over to the, the new site. The others will get um, sunsetted, closed, canceled. Um, an important point to to note, however, is that if if you know there's little chance, and we'll, we'll deal with this a little bit more uh, on the next slide, I think. But there's little to no chance that uh, pre-application, pre-installation application, you could submit by that date, November 21st. If there's little to no chance, it would clear that final date on the list, 12-12, so December 12th, in terms of you're not going to be able to get out there and complete installation and get it submitted for post-installation application by December 12th. And by all means, hold on to it and just submit it on December 1st when the new um, advanced home upgrade portal launches because it's it's going to get tested. It's going to be a robust and simple interface. Um, you're going to enjoy using it and it's going to help everybody out if you don't have to submit it uh, now and can wait until December 1st uh, to do so. So Monday, December 1st, the new advanced home upgrade online portal launches that same day the initial user login passwords will be mailed out, emailed out, that is. And then, of course, on Friday, uh, December 12th, that would be the last day to submit a post-installation application uh, for advanced home upgrade in Green Energy Compass for review. Um, that's also important to note, going back to November 21st, again, you may migrate any existing job app data to the new advanced home upgrade portal by um, by, as long as you do it by December 31st, that data uh, is accessible. So you can take it, you know, take a look at it, open it next to the new Advanced Home Upgrade portal, um, and, and have your Green Energy Compass um, browser open, and take a look at that data, pull the data directly from it, and start a new iteration of it in the Advanced Home Upgrade portal. Uh, just one of those things to sort of qualify when we talk about, you know, inactivating or closing inactive abandoned jobs, all right? So we're not, we're not not providing an option. You absolutely can take those jobs and put them into uh, the new advanced home upgrade portal. Um, just know that the existing information in Green Energy Compass will not be accessible to contractors, <coughs> program participants, that is, after December 31st, 2014. So how do we do this? So we highly recommend to save it until December 1st and submit it new to the new portal if 
you have a job ready to submit for pre-installation application, but you don't know if it'll be complete until after December 12th, which is when we want to see any post-installation application submitted by. Again, I strongly recommend that you do not submit these to Compass. It would be best to hold on to it. So December 1st, submit it new into the new portal. You'll have a much smoother uh, experience if you do so. Uh, so we also recommend that you save it until December 1st and migrate it over to the new portal if you have a job in pre-installation application started status, but you know won't be able to submit it until after that earlier date, November 21st. Again, that following week between December, or November 21st and December 1st is Thanksgiving week. It's a week we're going to use to actually take some time to, to um, switch stuff over and get prepared for the launch on December 1st. It is strongly recommended you do not submit these in Compass if they're in the status. After December 1st, migrate it to the new portal. I would highly recommend doing this if you have a job in Compass that has yet to reach the notice to proceed status or you think you can't reach full installation application submitted by December 12th. If you can't reach full app installation application submitted by no December 12th because you know, the installation is going to take longer than expected, scheduling was such that you couldn't quite you know, get it in and, you, and with any confidence that you can then get the, the attended um, documentation in by that Friday, uh, again, it's strongly recommended you not continue, submit, resubmit this in Compass. Go the route of migrating that existing data over to the new portal uh, and then submit it with a note that says what status was in in Green Energy Compass that you migrated it from Green Energy Compass, just as a real, you know, an easy flag for the desktop reviewer. So, additional guidance: um, access again, access to Compass will no longer be available after December 31st, 2014. I strongly recommend you migrate any active jobs from Compass to the new portal after December 1st, regardless if you can at all, you know, justify that, afford to, et cetera. All open active jobs must reach full installation application pending status no later than December 31st, 2014 in order to be processed through Compass. There will be no exceptions to those rules. Anything that hasn't gotten there is just going to have to get moved over to the um, uh, new portal and it's going to require some special um, help from Build a Green to do so, which is going to delay your rebate processing. So please don't wait until after Christmas to start working on that last job that hasn't quite reached full app installation application pending yet. It is also strongly recommended that you close or cancel inactive rebate applications on your own prior to November 21st, 2014, and then you print out a list of any active jobs in Compass as well as any app need going forward no later, of course, than December 30, 20, 31st, 2014 for your records. So we strongly recommend closing or canceling it on your own because it just helps um, clarify what the task at hand is. You know, there's obviously going to be um, a lot of questions and um, some additional support that uh, that will happen, but uh, to the extent possible, be proactive, close and cancel the stuff you know isn't going forward, and whittle down that list from the get-go uh, as soon as possible. That will be your list of green energy compass jobs, obviously, because you haven't you know, have access to the new portal yet. So, and it's the target, not the you know existing portal. So. Uh, program participants will receive up to two user logins to the new portal, uh, depending on your current um, participation level. So, you know, if you have two now, you'll get two going forward. If you have one now, you just get the one. Um, you know, for the sake of managing your own uh, job submission, it's not recommended you have um, too many of them because it just starts to get difficult to manage. Uh, but you know, if we, we fully recognize that sometimes you have more employees that af actively submit rebate applications uh, in Compass. This could be true also of the new portal. 
if that is the case, please send a list of names, email addresses, and job roles by November 21st so we can prepare and have it ready to go with the emailing of the uh, new login, for, log, login information on December 1st. And again, please abide by the recommendations made in this presentation. Expect delays and rebate processing of guidance on submission and corresponding dates are not observed. I, I usually don't read slides uh, in their entirety, but there's a lot of information to convey here, so uh, hopefully that's uh, not, not too much, con causing too much consternation for anyone. Um, and it, they're really important uh, points to make. And again, we, we highly recommend you go through this. We can send the slides uh, to folks who participated on this webinar after. Um, and you know, by all means, go through and make sure you understand everything that was uh, presented. Ask questions um, as needed. So using the new online portal. This is, you know, after you actually log in from the, that panel we saw earlier, this is the first page you get to. It's the splash page, so to speak, the, the dashboard. And the dashboard takes and uh, compiles, aggregates uh, what you're currently doing in Advanced Home Upgrade or Home Upgrade if you are, you know, if you switch over to that. Um, it'll tell you how many jobs are in pre-installation, how many are in post, what status they're in. Uh, we lo no longer have a notice to proceed status, so once the pre-install is approved, that is in essence notice to proceed. Um, you can take it as such. Um, the and then of course there's a there's sort of a back end after you know, a feedback loop, if you will, uh, where we let you know the jobs that are in the rebate issued status as well. So if you're just coming in, you want to get started, start an application. There's your button. You can toggle between advanced home upgrade and home upgrade here. Um, typically, you add a new building to get started. So the first step in adding a uh, new pre-installation application is to add the building information first. That would take you to this screen. You start filling it out. Uh, you can either click save if you have to run out of the building and go get lunch because the awesome taco truck just pulled up outside, or something along those lines. There's a fire alarm, I don't know. Uh, or you click Next to continue your application. Um, the other possibility is once you, you were at that first screen, um, you can choose an existing building. So maybe you did go out and have an awesome taco at the awesome taco truck. You come back and you now have to, you've already started your building, you now have to select the building you've already started. So you, you click the Choose Existing Buildings button, and you could search. You enter some pertinent information uh, in a you know, zip code, customer name, building name, address. Building name is something you, you kind of, you give it, uh, you give a, a, a building based on how you want to track the job. You can track in all these different ways, but sometimes, oftentimes people will either give it a code or they'll just call it the last name of the customer and, the, and residence. Once you, it'll, it'll put you in this next page once you've saved and, and continued. Let me, let me see here. Yeah. So if we go back to this screen, once you hit next, actually, um, you'll be, you will have populated your building information. Uh, it'll take you to the next screen where you actually enter project details. That starts with proposed installation cost, assessment date. Uh, BPI analyst, those are things you're familiar, inputs you're familiar with from Green Energy Compass. Uh, and the rebate issued uh, is an important, relatively new uh, thing uh, because you as the contractor can have the rebate reassigned to you. Uh, or there's a property owner paying for the work and there's a renter that uh, is the account holder, the PG account holder. So you need to establish that relationship, assign who's going to get the rebate, make sure that is qualified appropriately and the, the form that needs to be signed for each of those two scenarios gets uploaded with a, a PG&E account holder signature on it. Now the default of course is account holder because in most cases PG&E utility account holder is also the customer, paying customer. Um, 
Once, oh yeah, and also important to note, all fields are required unless marked optional. So that's something to keep in mind as you go through here. Um, this is the second half of that same page, and you would be uploading the required documents. Again, if it's marked optional, then it's optional based on uh, whether you, again, choose to have the rebate reassigned, so the payment release authorization form, or you know, with a desktop reviewer or, or you were proactive, you wanted to add some photos to, you know, sort of give a visual explanation of some unusual situation you encountered there and so on. Um, otherwise, the required forms, of course, the contract proposal scope of work, the Energy Pro XML, Energy Pro VLD, and the test measurements CAS form for test in. Click continue to save and continue and send this application to a review. It's as simple as that. Uh, otherwise, you can click Save if you still needed to dig up a document and come back to it later. That is possible. So you can save it without submitting it. Just make sure that if you intended to submit it, you click Continue to do so. Because uh, it'll take you to the next screen, which is you review the information you have uploaded. You get a, uh, a number of details that are a parsed out of the XML file, like the modeled incentive, uh, savings incentive, so the percentage for that tier, and the electric savings bonus, so what we have been calling kickers, the kilowatt hours kicker, and the gas savings bonus, the therms kicker. Those all add up, give you total estimated incentive amount. It's right there in that panel. The application numbers here, the, the proposed cost you put in, the estimated incentive from here, uh, rebate issued to, it's kind of a wrap-up of all the you know, real pertinent details, a nice little summary. It even tells you what Energy Pro model type you're using, what, what type of, you know, what version of Energy Pro you're using, which I think is fantastic because it can help head off some, some issues with desktop review at times, as well as the building analyst and assessment date, all important stuff. And of course, you're building where, where the job site is. This is the second half of the same page, so here are the documents you would have uploaded uh, that were required. You can also leave a note like you could in Green Energy Compass. And then the submit button, and that actually gets this thing scheduled to a review. So on the previous page, you were moving to the next screen. Uh, you could have saved. Here, you can either go back uh, if you need to edit something, or you submit it, and it gets scheduled to a review. If you're at this point, you have everything done, unless you have to go back and edit. So the next step is submitting. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, and then after you have hit submit, it gives you a, a brief little uh, wrap up in the sense that yes, you've submitted this. Your application number is this. Uh, duly noted. It gives you a place to go back to. So you can either go back to the dashboard or view your applications. The dashboard, if you remember, was that splash page with the all the applications submitted. Your lists, if you will. Uh, well, actually not the list, but the, so the numbers behind the list. And then the view actu applications actually will take you back to your list. So that's what this screen looks like. You know, you start to compile a list of applications you've submitted. Uh, here are the um, column headers, things you, you know, can search by, and then that's where you enter uh, a bit of information to search. So, for instance, if you and actually one of them is a pick list, so the job status. So if you wanted to search and sort, in essence, all of your um, post-installation submitted jobs, you could do so by, by clicking that pick list under that column for status. Or all the ones that required corrected, you know, corrective action, so the ones that have been returned by a desktop reviewer. Very easy to sort your um, submitted jobs this way. And again, you can toggle between home upgrade and advanced home upgrade here, or start a new application. So um, if you start a post-installation application, you do so um, once something has been approved at pre-installation. Um, so from the list, for instance, uh, that pre-install approved, you can start a new post-installation application from. Uh, it'll give you the app number up in the top, which is a little different than pre-install because <coughs> it, or when you started pre-install, because it wouldn't have had an application number until the application was, you know, submitted, so you're further along. 
So with post installation, it looks slightly different than the starting point. Um, it'll have your building and customer information, uh, project information. Again, if anything changes, well, for instance, you enter a completed package cost instead of a proposed package cost. Test out date. And again, if, if anything changed with the rebate issuance, uh, you could do that here. It's also hyperlinked to the download for the form that you need if you are reassigning the rebate to anyone else, PPI analyst, et cetera. Acquired documents, um, same, same method of upload. Leave notes if you need to and click continue or you can click save if you had to go dig up a document and upload later and then continue later. Take you to the next screen if you continue. Uh, and again, it's got you know your pertinent information, uh, application number, the new status, post install was created. You just created it. You can also view your pre-installation application with this hyperlink over here. So there's a lot of you know sort of useful cross-link um, um, buttons and well, hyperlinks, if you will, inside of you know, the portal. Uh, it's a easy to get from easier to get from place to place uh, than it was in Green Energy Compass. I think you'll find customer building info that you uh, already had uh, set with this. Uh, the new project information updated with uh, you know the the actual um, post installation customer cost, if you will, the actual installation cost. Uh, new you know, rebate issued status, if, if that was true, the, you know, a different BPI analyst, if it was different or the same, you know, it was a different instance, again, it's the post installation, just it, it carries over that structure from, um, that you're familiar, familiar with when Green Energy Compass, and then the test out date and modeling um, version. Uh, and of course, all your pertinent details for the incentive added up for the total, Second part of that same page, uh, the required documents you had uploaded previously on the on the previous um, step, and then add you know note any notes you had added. Uh, if everything checks out, looks good, you click submit, or you can of course go back and edit if you need to. Once you do submit, you get this uh, sort of wrap up page. Yeah, hooray, you have successfully submitted your post installation application and again your application number and it gives you a choice to go back to the dashboard uh, view applications if you applications again that's that's what it looks like uh, you know you track your statuses um, and sort search as we uh, mentioned earlier you can also uh, the other option <coughs> would be to um, well you can go to the dashboard but also it's worth mentioning that you can just get started with a, another job by going to the buildings button and selecting a building or adding a building, right? A new building. And then, of course, once you're in and you've added a building, um, I just wanted to show this section right here because it's similar to Green Energy Compass. We do ask in these sections for a little bit of additional data, so the you know sort of basic. Um, demographic information for that building and some information about what kind of equipment it has, the vintage and so on. Uh, also below here, which I don't think I get a screenshot of, but I'll have to um, look for in the future, is addition of the utilities, right? So the adding the gas meter and the electric meter, and then also um, making sure that you set up whoever the customer is. So the customer is typically going to be the account holder, PG&E account holder, if uh, it's not, you would want to enter the information for a landlord, for instance, uh, so that because the, the account holder and the landlord would, would be part of that transaction. We need to know both because one's getting the check, the other one is the PGD account holder who's the default customer. And of course, this button just uh, um, illustrates that you can actually, from, from this, um, the buildings button, and section, you can actually go to either home upgrade or advanced home upgrade and start an application with one or the other type of program pathway based on just starting out with the root building. So it's another convenient feature. Some critical uh, document reminder, uh, I, I, I should say it's always important to make sure you've got um, a Title 24 XML schema file output 
All right, so none of the other types are accepted. It's still the, again, Title 24 XML schema file. Um, that comes out of Energy Pro. Um, when HPXML uh, software is available, we'll give you full details on, on how to interact. So actually, the vendors will actually be do, performing some, some training for, for, for the program. Some reminders on QA desktop review, required documents, of course, test measurements, CAS form, uh, Energy Pro input BLD file, output XML file, uh, and the safety and quality acknowledgement otherwise known as the SQA form, and scope of work uh, slash contract signed, of course, at test out. Test in, it is just a proposal scope of work. Uh, conditionally required documents, uh, copy the building permits if required for the scope of work, only required at test out, of course, customer incentive payment assignment form. It's a mouthful, so we call it the SEPA form, and that's if you're resigning the rebate to you, the contractor. Uh, landlord property owner release form if it's a landlord property owner arrangement. Landlord property owner is the pay to the paying for the work. The uh, PG&E account holder is tenant. Uh, and then photos, and materials, or uh, and or materials or equipment spec sheets. Um, so any sort of unusual condition that helps explain something on a CAS form or something that was. Um, modeled in Energy Pro, it's always helpful uh, in order to have a smooth desktop review process. Um, otherwise, you know, it's a, it's pretty normal, you know, very something you're pretty well familiar with with Green Energy Compass. Although I think we got a lot of um, uh, efficiencies and a lot of new features um, that will make inter interaction with the Advanced Home Upgrade Portal uh, more user friendly. And of course, as always, a BPI certified professional performance combustion plant safety testing, test in, test out, always required. That CAS um, performing BPI individual needs to have had the pg &E advanced technical training for one day. I always like to, to bring that up, just in case someone hasn't heard it. Because every once in a while we come across someone who hasn't. So uh, questions and comments, we got through that reasonably short order, so um, we should have some good amount of time for questions. Um, program contacts and next steps, as usual, buildingcreenutility.org is the primary uh, location for information. Um, this webinar will get up there at some point, and we'll send it out to participants on today's webinar. Documents, uh, policies, training dates, etc. And, uh, of course, we'll be you know, updating you via email e-blast or uh, we try to keep those to a minimum, of course, and put most of the information coming out of the program in the monthly newsletters. So do make sure you read the monthly newsletters. Um, we're trying to reduce the number of non-monthly newsletter communication, uh, but every once in a while something important does come out, so look for those as well. And the main contact points, participant hotline, 510-285-6222. That is the customer service line. Um, the general customer service line that can answer most of your program related questions and they'll find who is most available to a answer a technical question if they're not able to themselves so it's the best you know entry point uh, to, to get any inquiries answered um, I think that should do it just about thank you for your time uh, with that we'll sort of open up to questions so <clears throat> we'll uh, take a look at, at how many we've got here and we'll come back in just a moment and start answering some questions. So uh, Jake will read the first question. Go ahead, Jake. First question, where do we note in Green Energy Compass that current outstanding projects need to migrate? So, <coughs> excuse me, what we'd like to see is that you're migrating your own projects uh, unless you think it's something that can reasonably get through Green Energy Compass in the time we discussed with the, with the dates discussed. Um, the, in order to initially assess what um, you have outstanding, when you go into Green Energy Compass, um, you go into your jobs list. So uh, 
uh, the button that says jobs right after you log in aggregates a list of all the applications you have created and they're all in different statuses um, uh, that that is a, a good way to uh, you know sort of quickly assess how many need to be dealt with and and then you'd probably have to go in at that point to each of them and assess where they're at um, make sure you under you're clear on how long you think it'll take for that job to wrap up and then just let us know you know whether you intend to process this via green energy compass uh, or whether you intend to you want to migrate this over to the new portal uh, and or whether there are any jobs we can cancel slash close you can do that on your own as well we can help guide you through that process um, you can always set up a you know a half hour um, customer service um, a mentoring session to, to go over some of this stuff um, call the customer service line or reach out to um, someone you, you talk to on a regular basis if uh, if you you know know you can get a hold of them easily otherwise you know again try the customer service line it's the best entry point it'll get you to someone who can help you sooner rather than later but we strongly encourage you to um, anything you know you can hold off to December 1st hold off and just submit it the new um, advanced home upgrade portal as you as you've seen it's reasonably easy I think quite a bit easier actually to submit an application in the new advanced portal uh, than green energy compass even so you know, everything flows a bit better it's easier to get from screen to screen um, I think you'll enjoy the process more and it'll help us out a lot and reduce confusion and potential delay uh, dealing with things that you know we're left to the last minute. Uh, go ahead with the next question, Jake. Where do we send the additional user information? So I'm guessing that's about um, trying to get login information. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, user logins. And if you have more than two that you need to be using the Advanced Home Upgrade portal. So if that is the case, uh, just compile a list of um, email addresses, usernames, and um, their job role so we have some idea what it is they do for you. Um, you know, we're reasonably lenient if it's like one extra. Um, these things all cost uh, something. so. If it's not absolutely necessary, you don't think someone's going to use it, then it's not necessarily worth um, burdening the system with because it, it creates, you know, more um, sort of support and tracking we have to do over time with more users as well. So it, it is is better to to be um, frugal with that if at all possible. It also helps you know man helps you guys manage what gets uploaded because you know who's using it and who shouldn't be. Um, but in the event that you do need to have another individual or two, um, depending on which your situation is now, uh, send, you know, send an email to uh, jobs at buildatgreenutility.org, and as long as before the 21st of November, it should get in the hopper and on the list of email uh, addresses to send new logins to by December 1st, before December 1st, rather. No one's getting a new login and until December 1st because there will be nothing to log into <clears throat> it needs to make we need to make sure it's live up and running and ready to use before anyone gets a user login okay a couple of questions about modeling so Jake go ahead with those uh, first one, is there a list of new accepted modeling software in the second one? Uh, well, let's do the first one first. So uh, as far as the list of new accepted modeling software, the, the vendors for HPXML are still being vetted uh, for their um, ability to produce uh, an accurate um, HPXML output file. So uh, there are, um, I believe, four uh, strong contenders at this point, and it's very likely that they all carry through as options, but that it remains to be seen. Um, 
So those would be in addition to uh, Energy Pro. And then the second question, oh, and, and as soon as we have data on who those uh, actual final participants will be, which should be more like, you know, beginning of 2015, um, we'll get that out to everyone. Second question, is Energy Upgrade California still using Energy Pro version 5, and will you will Build It Green require Energy Pro version 6? So uh, there's really two questions there also, but, um, uh, you know, when you're talking about Energy Pro, there's always lots of questions. So, yeah, Energy Pro 5 we're still accepting, and it'll still be in use uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, there have been some concerns that... Uh, support uh, for the software may be sunsetting at some point. That is always a possibility, of course. We don't have any definitive information on that, and it doesn't look like that is going to happen before the end of 2015, regardless. Um, as far as Energy Pro 6 goes, uh, that is, we're taking a wait-and-see approach on that. There's some things that still need to be um, updated and corrected, as I understand it, with Energy Pro 6 to be, to be usable for um, our program, it is entirely possible that Energy Pro 5 will continue to be in use for quite some time because of the way it's designed, and it was sort of designed, the RES performance module, specifically for this program. Uh, so we'll see. Um, you know, we will, of course, let you guys, the participating contractors, know as soon as we know if there are any changes to any of that information. Um, any change that does occur would, would likely be accompanied by a reasonable uh, time period during which you can you know, make the transition. So probably at least a month in order to transition over to something new if that absolutely must occur. Um, it is unlikely to occur uh, anytime soon, certainly not before the end of the year. We do not expect that. And, um, you know, it looks like based on the sort of uh, lack of clarity around exactly how Energy Pro 6 would fit in with this program, um, that is not likely to occur right at the beginning of 2015 either. So uh, all indications are at the moment that we have some reasonable stability. And you should have some additional options soon as well. So uh, there's another question about, uh, let's see, this, this one's about job submission. Will there be a pre-approval email sent out to trigger post-data upload on the contractor's part? And the answer is yes. So when you, you know, clear that status, when you get an approval uh, pre-installation, then uh, as, as you experience with Green Energy Compass, you get an approval email uh, to move to the, the next, that you're eligible to move to the next stage, post-installation, when, when you're ready. Um, you also get one when you achieve uh, post-installation approval, so post-installation post application approval. Uh, so it's, it's very, you know, it's seamless and similar um, in, in structure to Green Energy Compass in that respect. Next question, I noticed only one additional documents box. Will there be more available boxes to upload additional documents? So uh, in a future um, um, version, there will be additional or, and or a more dynamic uh, way to, to upload, in that, especially in that section. Um, for the time being, what we recommend is you actually zip, you know, compress a folder. <coughs> Excuse me just getting over cold, so I apologize. Uh, but you take, you know, your um, whatever you're submitting, dump it into a folder, and then use a, 
a compression tool like uh, WinZip or, or um, 7-Zip or something like that, or if you're using a Mac, it's really easy. Just uh, I think you just right click or something like that. So, or I mean, you might have to use Stuff It for a Mac. <laughs> um, but anyway, there's some solutions out there for compression, and we'll help you out with that. We'll even, uh, you know, the um, customer service can ha can help direct you some sites where you can find that stuff if you have trouble finding it. But generally speaking, you can do a Google search on any of the ones I mentioned, and, and uh, I think 7-Zip's even, it's like shareware, so you can use it for, you know, free it at, at will for a, a significant period of time. WinZip, I think you have to pay for it a little sooner. Oh, a follow-up to what I was just talking about with comp compression, too, is uh, you actually don't need to use either of those software tools with a PC. You can actually just send it to a compressed folder. I forgot about that. So if you right-click on a folder, it, it says, you know, there's an option to send to, and you literally just send it to a compressed folder, and that's zipped. So uh, scratch what I said about the other tools. If you, if you, you can download those if you want to encrypt something the password to send other people, but please don't do that for our purposes because we don't we don't want to have to chase passwords around. Uh, just go ahead. This is a secure site, so you can upload files here using a password to get into it. So just compress the folder into a zip file. Uh, so, go ahead. Uh, there was a request to recap how we migrate existing jobs. Okay, so um, as far as, you know, you, the first step really is to, to assess your list of outstanding uh, jobs in Green Energy Compass and put it into three categories, right? So one category would be this job is inactive and it's abandoned. We're never going to see this thing revived and certainly not before uh, November 21st or, you know, even the end of December. <clears throat> so there's, there's not a chance there. Um, that's an important list because it helps helps bring some clarity to, to anything that would need to be migrated, whittles down the overall list. The next status would be stuff that you're not quite sure might be something that someone calls you back for, um, There's and it's a good chance that it's before the end of the year. <clears throat> something that has a reasonable chance to, or, or even, you know, early next year, it has a reasonable chance to, to go again sometime soon, in which case you want to put it on sort of a secondary list of less urgent, but you want to migrate over, something you want to carry forward uh, to the new portal. And then um, the, the third list, or the, I guess I'm doing it in reverse order, maybe for you guys is the most important one. Um, is the stuff that's, you know, active and in progress and has a reasonable chance of getting to um, post-installation uh, sub submitted uh, before December 12th. So now we can reference the dates. Uh, you, you guys have the slides after this, and uh, there's quite a lot of detail there, so I encourage you to go back through it. But that list is the list of things that you're, you, you want to try and, and finish in Compass, but we encourage those to be as few things as humanly possible. You know, be as honest with, with your assessment as, as you can be, because if it in any way, shape, or form can wait until December 1st to be submitted uh, or can be migrated over to, to finish its tra transit through the process in the new Advanced Home Upgrade portal, you know, beginning this December 1st, that is strongly recommended. You will experience a much quicker process uh, and it will help uh, free up some resources on our end. Uh, you know, there'll be there'll be less um, um, additional work to do uh, if we get clarity on that stuff. And anything that can be held should be. Uh, of course, there will be things that can't be, and that's fair. Uh, but just make sure that you're adhering to those date thresholds and all reasonableness to make sure that that what you're holding 
we are trying to, to continue to get through Green Energy Compass before the end of the year uh, can, can reasonably do so. Um, and if you, you know, when you do migrate a job, if you're doing, you being proactive and migrating a job over, you know, you have your green energy compass um, job data open, right, on in one browser on your computer screen, and you have the new advanced home upgrade portal open in another, you know, browser window uh, on the same screen, and you simply transfer data over. <clears throat> There's no good way to magically automatically port data over from one to the other um, for various reasons uh, and you know even if that were a simple task it would take a lot longer to roll out than we have time for we need to get into this new uh, database because you know for various reasons that we've discussed earlier there's, there's quite a few um, advantages to it and there's quite a few drawbacks to the current um, limitations to the current uh, database so just have them open on both screens, take data out of, you know, co literally cut and paste data or copy and paste data out of from, from Green Energy Compass to the other, and it's as simple as that. Once you have submitted, uh, you enter a note, and it would be ideal to enter a note to, to flag for the QA desktop reviewer that this was a job you migrated over from Green Energy Compass, and it was in X status, and they can look that up um, and just confirm the details and, um, you know, again, as far as the files go, you download them from Green Energy Compass and upload them to the new Advanced Home Upgrade portal. Um, it's all fairly straightforward, I think. Obviously, it takes some work. Um, there'll be some assistance that needs to occur in desktop review. But just, uh, you know, uh, be as proactive as you can. We encourage everyone to be because it helps mitigate the, uh, um, the general uh, chaos that could ensue if everyone waits till the last minute to submit everything and make a decision about uh, what kind of path their application is going to take. So be proactive, please. Uh, it's really critical uh, in, under the circumstances. And, you know, we know, we fully realize that it's a, this is a difficult transition. Help us make the transition smoother. And we are confident that you're going to experience a much more enjoyable interaction with the new Advanced Home Upgrade portal. That brings us right up to the top of the hour. We're a little past, about 3.03. So um, if you have any additional questions, feel free to submit them to jobs at buildatgreenutility.org, as usual, uh, or call the um, customer service line at 510-285-6222. Thank you again for your time. And uh, we look forward to working with you all to make this a smooth transition. Thanks again.